Let's look at the vocabulary. Clergyman. A priest. Phrenology. Theory of brain and science of character reading. Transcendentalism. Belief in the goodness of people and nature. A Beccadarian. Elementary. Tedious. Tiresome. Soothing. Having a gently calming effect. Timidity. Lack of courage or confidence. Excited. Very enthusiastic and eager. Pursuit. Activity of a specified kind. Drowsy. Sleepy and lethargic. Weary. Extreme tiredness. Bashfulness. Shy. Eternal. Lasting or existing forever. Era. The period in history. Reform. Make changes. The district school as it was. By one who went to it. Warren Burton, 1800-1866, was an American clergyman and writer who wrote on Phrenology, Transcendentalism, and Education. The District School as it was, 1833. He describes the school he himself went to in his native town in Wilton, New Hampshire from 1804 to 1818 in order to have future generations acquainted with the accommodations or rather disaccommodations of their predecessors. And that is why the book was written under the name One Who Went to It. After that he joined Harvard and graduated in 1821. He later worked as a teacher, preacher and contributor to different publications but later devoted himself to objects of reform. Warren Burton recollects his schooling. Mary Smith, the teacher dearest to his heart. Mr. Dodd Ellis's method of teaching, and the ecosystem that works at school in the S.A. Warren Burton at three and a half years attended the old schoolhouse as an abecadarian and had to do all alone the tedious process of learning. The first learning that was easy to learn were capital A, X and O. Uncarried Perry's spelling book for the school. The narrator was excited to talk about Mary Smith who was the dearest to his heart. She always lends a helping hand and inspires with soothing and winning words with which one can overcome timidity. She cared for everyone with a cheerful smile and a softening eye. The learning of A, B, C was done with ease with the best methods of teaching under the guidance of Mary Smith. The pursuit of knowledge and curiosity was Ignited by Mary Smith with her love and care, the narrator recollects, When I grew restless, and turned from side to side, and changed from posture to posture, in search of relief from my uncomfortableness, she spoke words of sympathy rather than reproof. When I grew drowsy and needed a comfortable position, to drop into sleep and forgetfulness of the weary hours, she would gently lay me at length on my seat and leave me just falling to slumber, with her sweet smile. The love of learning started with Mary Smith the best memory I cherish. In twelfth winter, it was thought best to try a teacher from college again, as the committee had been assured that there were teachers to be found there of the first order, and well worth the high price they demanded for their services. A Mr. Ellis was engaged at twenty dollars per month, from the same institution. Mr. Dodd Ellis was high in demand at the college of his amazing expertise. His tall, spare, stooping and dyspeptic form is now distinctly before my mind's eye. It happened that he was to be at our house for the first week. On Saturday Mr. Ellis arrived the narrator and his brothers were smitten with bashfulness and awkwardness. Mr. Dodd Ellis was seemed just like one of us, with cordial heart, chatty tongue, and merry laugh. He seemed perfectly acquainted with our prevailing thoughts and feelings, and let his conversation slide into the current they flowed in, as easily as if he had never been nearer college than we ourselves. With my father, he talked about the price of produce, the various processes and improvements in agriculture, and the politics of the day, and such other topics as would be likely to interest a farmer so far in the country. And the topics talked 
this teacher introduced a new exercise into our school that we had never thought of before as being possible to ourselves. It was a composition. We hardly knew what to make of it. To write. To put sentence after sentence is like a newspaper, a book, or a sermon. We could not do this. We could not think of such a thing, indeed. It was an impossibility. But we must try, at any rate. The subject given out for this novel use of thought and pen was friendship. Friendship, what had we to say on this subject? We could feel on it, perhaps. Especially those of us who had read a novel or two and had dreamed of eternal friendship. But we had not a single idea on the topic friendship. Mr. Dodd Ellis succeeded in delivering the best of topics in composition and letter writing. He learned better how to accommodate the theme to the youthful mind. The narrator recollects. We were set to describe what we had seen with our eyes, heard with our ears, and what had interested us. Mr. Ellis more often proposed more abstract subjects, which required more thinking and reasoning, and ignited fresh ideas among his students. Warren Burton projects Mr. Ellis was decidedly the best schoolmaster he ever had and he was the last best teacher too. He commenced a new era in district schools with his passion in teaching. In education, Warren Burton saw the chief means of effecting the reforms ardently desired in society. Burton was an early promoter of the parent-teacher association idea, being convinced that all the improvements in schools and modes of teaching. Burton made considerable progress according to the prevailing notions of education at the district schools and his works helped to reform American education.